And finally, we can start to work on the last piece of the project, the beams of light. Implementing this component is easier than it seems. We were using the mesh transmission material from episode 1 and also moving the top vertices of the beams on a circle path. We'll create a new component called beams and like all the other components, we'll pick the GLB file with useGLTF and also a texture called beams mask that we'll later use as an opacity map with the use texture hook. We have seven beams, I'm saving these geometries in an array and then for each geometry I'm creating a beam component that also has a reference to the opacity mask and the index of the geometry in the array. And here's a simplified version of the beam component, I'm using a mesh basic material Material to display the opacity map as a color texture and then I'm importing the component inside the app and now we're ready to go back on Chrome and see the output. Without all the fancy materials and movement logic, here's what the beams look like. They're just simple quad shapes and the beam mask will be used to hide the corners of the quad and make it look a little bit smoother on the edges. And the easiest way to do that is by making this material transparent and using this texture as an opacity map. But in this channel we do like fancy materials so let's go back to the beams component and apply a mesh transmission material. We're also selecting between two different colors depending if the beam index is even or odd, and we're making the material transparent. Also, we're adding an alpha map, and a moment ago I used the wrong term, it's not called opacity map, it's called alpha map, but the effect is 100% the same. And I've covered this property in another one of my videos, it's an important one for this case because it enables order independent transparency and we need it for the setup. And with more or less 15 lines of code we've improved the look of the beams to the point that they're basically unrecognizable from what they looked like 20 seconds ago. And this is the beauty of reactory fiber, stuff that wouldn't normally take hundreds of lines to implement becomes a little more than a one liner in reactory fiber. Now we'll focus on arguably the hardest part of this tutorial, and that is animating the movement of the beams. First things first, we need to save inside an array all the vectors that we like to animate. And in 3JS, and pretty much any other library, every vertex of a mesh contains a few pieces of information which 3JS calls attributes, and these attributes can contain, for example, the vertex position in the 3D world, the normal or the UVs used for texturing. And in our case, we need the position of each vertex which is contained inside the position attribute that we're cloning in this variable. Here we're iterating over all the elements inside the position attribute and saving each vertex position inside the vectors array. And since we're only interested in the vertices at the top of the beam, since those are the only vertices that we'll animate, we also need to sort this array such that vertices with the highest Y value are saved at the end of the array. There's a problem with this approach though. The vertices inside the position attribute are not unique for this mesh since some of the vertices are repeated because we're using two triangles to create the shape of the beam. There should be a way to export meshes in Blender such that all the vertices are unique because that's a common technique called indexing which helps reducing the size of the 3D model but yours truly tried for two hours to do that and failed miserably. And the only alternative that came to mind was to manually check if each of these vectors is already included in the array before pushing it. I need to make sure that these vectors are unique because I'll assume moving forward that vector number 2 and number 3, or rather at index number 2 and number 3, are always the vectors at the top of the beam because these are the only vectors that we're going to animate. Great, but how will we animate these two vectors? We'll make them follow in tandem a circular path. And every time there's a new frame to render, we'll update the geometry of the mesh by changing the position attributes, and this will be enough to create the animation. Note that since we're only interested in changing specific vertices of this mesh, we can't use the simple rotation or position attributes of the mesh, since those properties apply for all the vertices of the mesh. To do something on each frame, we can use our battle-tested use frame hook, which will also conveniently give us, a, give us a clock that we can use to know how much time has passed since the start of the application and then we can create a point in space which sits exactly one unit away in the z direction and don't mind the fact that i'm calling this a vector for the time being you can imagine it as a simple point which we're going to rotate with the apply axis angle function. The first argument of the apply axis angle function is the vector that we're going to use to rotate the point. In this case, this point will rotate along the up vector. The second argument is used to determine 
how much we want to rotate the point and we'll simply use the elapsed time to determine how much we have to rotate around the y vector. If we pick the position of this point and multiply it by 3.25, the radius of this ring will effectively become 3.25. We want to make sure that the beams don't move too close to their vectors, so this will basically increase the radius of the circle that they're moving in. And at the moment, this point in space is rotating at the center of the 3D world. It has no relationship whatsoever with the vertices of the beams. For now. Let's now iterate on the real position attribute of the geometry. And I'm calling this one real because the one that is saved here as initial position attribute is a clone of the position attribute. So if we do change this one, then we will actually change the geometry that will be visible on screen. And how should we change the real position of the vertices? Well, we'll start by picking the starting positions, which we conveniently saved in the cloned attribute. And then we'll check if this vertex is one of the top vertices. And if it is, we'll assign the position of the vertex stored in the current geometry. And we're interested in vertex at index i, which is the one that we're computing. And we'll assign to this vertex the point that we are rotating here plus the position of the initial vertex. And this is finally the time where we are relating the transform vector, which was the point that we were rotating with the apply axis angle function, with the vertices of the beams. So the vertices at the top of the beams can be transformed by that vector by just adding the two together. Lastly, we'll need to flip a variable to let FreeJS know that the content of this attribute has changed. And there we have the animated beams. We're very close, but not there yet. You'll notice that all the beams are kind of moving at the same time in the same direction. That's not what we want. We want each beam to move in a unique direction. And so it's super easy to fix that. We just have to add a single one-liner to the code that we already have and we'll be good to go. And sorry, we're not going to change the direction of the beams. We'll just change the starting angle of the animation such that every beam starts rotating at a different point. And this will give the impression that each beam is moving on its own path. And it's enough to add a semi-random number to the angle of the rotation by using the index of the beam to finally complete our animation. Now, each mesh will move on its own path and will have its own little life, independent from the other ones. This is also marking the end of the project. We explored a bunch of exciting materials together, some of which we created entirely from scratch with no toy. And we also learned how to change individual vertices of a mesh by updating their position attributes. And that's the end. As always, if you have feedback on the format of these videos, please share it down in the comment section. Every bit of advice helps to improve the channel. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again on our next coding adventure.